Cape Verdeans United is a charitable, non-profit organization dedicated to the children of the Cape Verde Islands by assisting these children to grow strong through play and education. Cape Verdeans United was founded by two amazing sisters, Jeannie Lamba and Tila Adams. Listen to their story, the inspiration and the motivation and reasons why they started Cape Verdeans United. I think the, in the inspiration for the entire project is a project organization. Yeah. Uh, the inspiration for this organization began on a trip to Cape Verge in 1999. Um, I think for me it started when <clears throat> sitting in front of my house looking at the young kids playing outside and and just looking at their faces and they looked at us coming from America in awe and I remember as a child feeling that same <clears throat> feeling toward people who came from here and I think this time um, the role was reversed. Mm -hmm. I felt the children were looking up to me to make a difference in their lives. Right. And that's when we came here and we decided that we needed to do something. And we didn't know what that something was at, the, at that point, but we felt that we needed to do something. Yeah. Well, for me, all my life I wanted to do something. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. It was like, you know, where I remember us playing in the, you know, swings, what we call it swings, like a rope on a tree that you would swing us and we would go flying and out. And hopefully it would hold, yeah. Yeah, it would go flying out, you know, and the branches would break. And I always dreamt of having a swing set where I could just swing away. So I've always wanted to do something, but, but you're right. It wasn't until we went back and saw the kids. And we had our own children as well. And we, yeah. you know. And realized that, you know, here we are. We have, God has given us something, you know. We've been taken away from the islands, brought to the United States. We've been educated. We can do something. And it wasn't enough to just not do anything then, you know. Mm -hmm. We came back. We had to do something. And then it was like, okay, what do we do? What do we do? Yeah. yeah. I think we started with, what if we were to collect stuff? Right. And we began collecting things. And it's something that we had been doing, because uh, yeah. we always send drum full of yeah. food and clothing yeah. to people there. Yeah. Not always, but often. Yeah, and we realized, though, that the expense of that was too much for you and I to burden. And we felt like... Um, and, and in that sense, you're also only helping one family or one person, and we wanted to do something that would help uh, specifically children and maybe change their lives and change their... Um, in some way, yeah. Yes. Their outlook and their... Well, friend. maybe like, you know, so something that could help them inspire to be somebody, you know, like somebody hasn't forgotten them. They were not the forgotten children. For me, that's... That's what it was. And that, you know, here is somebody that could do something and care for them. And then when we came back from Cape Verde, after being inspired by the children, once again, uh, I, one day I was watching op uh, an Oprah show, and she had a program on how that we all have a reason to, to be in here. You know, we all have something that we're here for. So for me, that kind of brought everything together. You know, coming from Cape seeing the children, seeing the need, me being one of those kids myself, you know, 20 years before, I, I actually started crying because I said, here, you know, I have a purpose and I think I know what my purpose is. And I think that's when you called me, you know, yes. with, mm -hmm. you know, Chai, I have an idea how we can start or, our organization. And that's, a, a, there was a festival at uh, RISD and they were putting together a, um, some affair where you could make the food from your country and sell it to the students. And... We partook in that, and mm -hmm. it took about two hundred dollars. Lots of cooking. <laughs> Lots of cooking, and we turned out eight hundred twelve dollars, and it felt really great. It wasn't great money, but that was basically the fund that started yeah. the entire yeah. project. So we had enough money to 
go and get our nonprofit yeah. and started our documentation process. Yeah. yeah. From 200 to 800. I couldn't believe we did it. And it was like, it was wow, hiring. we can do exactly. something. Yeah, right, right. Like, you yes. know what? You can do it. You just have to go ahead and do it. Sometimes you have an idea, mm -hmm. but if you don't take that first action, it can be very small. Mm -hmm. And that action can lead to bigger action. Yeah. I think that's what happened. And that's what it, how it started. Yeah. Because for the longest time, we had no idea no how idea. to begin. You know, we don't have the money to yeah. make a difference. And how do I we know. go about? Yeah, and we didn't want to start, you know, making, you know, sending a little drum. We wanted to do something big. Yeah. And so that's how it started. Yeah. At this point, we realized that we could not do this alone. That there were other people out there just like us that just needed to come together in a group like ours and do make a difference and that's when I believe we contacted some friends that we knew felt yeah. the same way we did but didn't yeah. know the direction <clears throat> right and invited them over to a meeting yeah. and I knew that Ben Gomes my compadre you know he had mentioned that he was interested in helping mm -hmm. and I knew that Philomena Medina had also uh, had been interested in doing something for the children of Cape Verde and Manuel, Manuel Dalamba who is our vice president and so we contacted them and said, you know, we're going to start this organization. Do you guys, are you guys interested in joining and us? And can they, you help us get yeah, to the next level? Right, yeah, right. Basically. And that's when we started, you know, finding out the information on how to file for 501c3. Philomena did a lot of that work, yeah. um, you know, and um, registering with the state. Right? Getting chartered, yeah. Yeah, getting mm -hmm. chartered in the state of Rhode Island because we had no idea. Yeah, there were a lot of things. You know, what just steps we, we needed to take. Exactly. Yeah. We just knew we can raise the money, but all these other legal matters that. Yeah, needed to be taken care of, and I think yeah, and we did that. You know, we in the process of doing that, we decided that since we're so good at cooking and selling yeah. food, that we would sell you know food at the fundraiser in Providence. You know, Independence the Independence Day, Day. Mm -hmm. in Indian Point Park, mm -hmm. and that was a big one. It was yeah. Um, and we made a couple of thousand dollars, but we, you know, we cooked all day, all night, you know, um, and yeah, we made a couple of thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. And going from that, we did the onset fundraiser, uh, and then we decided that we needed to, to come up with a name. Yes. And uh, we talked about several other names, and then the name Cape Verdeans United stuck, yeah. you know, because it meant, you know, it really meant what we wanted to be, like we're getting all the Cape Verdeans together. united mm -hmm. together. We didn't want a project to be just for Bravo, we wanted it to be for Cape Verde. Yes. Because often we heard, you know, many different people had different organizations, but, you know, they did it for specific islands, and we, we didn't want that. We wanted it to be about Cape Verde. We didn't yes. want it to just be about the, island we, the islands we, we were yeah. from. So I think, and also the idea of being united, and knowing that we needed to bring more people together. Yes. to accomplish this goal. I think that mm -hmm. really made the name Cape Verdeans United. I, I must United. say that, you know, we're talking about it, this now six years later. I mean, there were some challenges along the way that some days we wanted to know if maybe we should quit, and but we didn't. It started and, with the very first well, you know, yeah. <laughs> attempt at a dinner dance, remember? Yes, yeah, yeah. so we decided we we're going to give this beautiful uh, dinner dance at the casino <laughs> in Providence, and it was it was beautiful. At and the Roger thing Williams is, Casino. Water Williams Park Casino, and even though it was very complicated, I don't think our guests knew the, the trouble we went through for that. <laughs> and it was February, it was supposed to be a Valentine's dance, and it was warm, the warmest day we had the whole year probably. And all yes. the ice melted that we Well, the thing, first of all, we were looking at not having any ice for the party as we were um, holding our own bar at mm -hmm. the time. So we had a lot of problems, but at the end, I don't think it was, it was so well accepted. Yeah. And the people had such a great time. The place was beautiful. The artists were excellent. Yes. And we realized, you know what? We can, this, this can happen. Yeah. I think I personally felt like... Um, God was on our side that day. Yeah. There were so many things that could have gone wrong. Yeah, it ended beautifully. Yeah, and that's how we found a wonderful uh, mm -hmm. other member, Stephanie exactly. Ramos. That's why exactly. she came exactly. to the function. Yes. And she's been with she us all throughout the years. She's been here. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Day. So it was that, for that, it was all worth it. Absolutely. <laughs> Everything has a reason. Yes. Our first major project was to build um, Project Samba. Project was Project Sandbox, and it's to build a playground in each of the islands okay, of Cape Verde. Right. Yes, and then thank God for the school that was being built in Brava. That made it easy because we didn't have to fight to f to find 
a site, right? Mm -hmm. So that was donated to us, a site um, for us to go and just mm -hmm. put the playground, and that made it so much easier. Yeah. You know. Finally, in 2006, myself, Stephanie, my husband John, my daughter Jacinta, and Jeffrey uh, Ramos, uh, Stephanie's brother, was able to travel to Cape Verde and actually work on playing, putting the playground up in the island of Brava. That was a huge undertaking that we, I had not realized um, that it was going to take so much effort, yeah. you know, when we initially started, you know, thinking about putting the playground, you know, yeah. you know so that was the, um, you know, the island of Brava, the school Nossa Senhora de da Grace, you know, in, in Nossa Senhora de Mundo, so, you know, so that in 2006, that became a reality. Yeah. So... Um, so we decided that we would dedicate our first um, playground to um, Crystal Rose. Uh, Crystal Rose um, was killed by a drunk driver at the age of 19, and we were all deeply affected by her death. And we thought that um, there was something that we could do as an organization, so she will always be remembered. So we dedicated the park to Crystal Rose Baptista, and this is, that's her. We've, we have one playground complete in Brava. Mm -hmm. um, we have a second, second playground in San Nicolau. Yeah, that was shipped last year. Last year, and it's under construction right now. Right, they're actually building a park to put the playground exactly. in. Isn't that wonderful? And we're working, hopefully with this fundraiser, we'll be working to send the next playground to full. Yeah, hopefully by, you know, the end of the summer, that one would be in place. Mm -hmm. And now we need to work That's together right. to get the other six playgrounds in place. And we realize it's been slow. It is yeah. slow. And I think that with your help, mm -hmm. we can get this going a lot quicker. So we have different fundraising ideas. And... We don't want it to take another six years in order for us to have three playgrounds built. So if we can get 324 people to um, donate $1 per day for 365 days, we could have the six playgrounds built within one year. And I think that's doable. I don't think that's a lot to ask for. And I know that the Cape Verdean community out there is capable of doing this. Uh, what's a dollar a day? It's less than a cup of coffee, right? If we really get together like we, we should as, a Cape, as Cape Verdeans, Cape Verdeans, um, Cape Verdean Americans, Americans, anybody who is willing to donate a dollar a day, we could have this mission done within a year and go on to our next mission. This is where we ask you to please come on board with us and one dollar a day and I'll be the first one to say I will be the first donor. I am the second donor of one dollar a day. On the third. All right. So we have three people already. Well, we have five people. I know five the people. five members will be the initial donors and now how many do we need? 319 people. And I and, think we can do it. And I think right now we're accepting. So for more information, go on our website. It's www.cvunited.org or .com. Either one will get you there. Or call us. My number is area code 860-644-6953. Or you can email us at cvu at cvunited.org. And make your part. Those children are waiting for you to change their lives. Thanks. We are very grateful for all the people that's brought us to where we are today. We didn't do this by ourselves, you know. It was a group effort, you know, like, you know, for instance, you know, the guy that, you know, from day one started putting a check in the mail for $25 to, you know, even though we hadn't done anything. But every single month, he sent us a $25 check to help with the organization because he believed in what we were doing. Yes. And the guy who is the first person, seems like day two after he gets his invitation, he puts the invitation, his check, his in, check the in the mail. Yeah, every Always, single Always, every year. And the people who helped, you know, to prepare food for the fundraiser, the people that's come with us yeah. to each of the festivals and 
from morning to night over there helping, helping us sell, sell food. Yeah, so it's a uh, and people will help us sell the tickets. Yes. Or half of you are here. You yes. Know? Yes. Oh, yeah. Everything so, helps. Absolutely. Yeah. Every little thing. And the people that can make, make it to our functions, but still send their donations. We are so grateful. So all the, all, I mean, the playground that's been installed, you each should feel like you had something part to do it. with it, a part of it. So it's not just us, you know, the five members of the organization. So we thank you. So thank you and keep thank you. Up the good work and keep supporting us. We need yes. you. Yes, because we're not giving up. <laughs> we have six more to go. Yes, that's right. And the next project. Thank you. It's just the beginning. My goodness, but it's all worth it. it it's was. all worth it. Yes, it feels good. Yeah. <laughs> Terra vou saber que me estive se estando para cada homem viver. Se imagina. Terra vou saber que me estive se estando para cada homem viver. Se imagina. Terra vou saber que me estive se estando para cada Homem vive, se imagine. É a boa saber que me estilo se está tanto pacado. Homem vive, se imagine. Terra vou saber que me estilo se está tanto pacada. Homem vive, se imagina. Manos, braço, terra, te habituas a bater. Riz, sei que frota. Se macariz na sementeira de gente, para depois um bem ficar. Oi, tambor vazio Na bus de partilha Má renda Que aqueles que iam trabalhar Terra bom saber Que é vestido Se está tudo para cada Homem vive Se imagina Terra bom saber Que é vestido Se está tudo para cada Homem vive Se imagina Sem reforma nem pensão Doença na bolsega Iberia, Greco, Holanda Filho sem escola A mulher largou Num vida tudo De fazer dinheiro Ao outro guardar É a boa saber Que é vestido Se está tudo para cada Homem vive Se imagina Terra vou saber que é vestido se está tanto para cada homem vive se imagina. Mas 